Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, this is another episode of RG Tech News, I think that's what we call it, uh, whereby we uh, just discuss some of the interesting stories that have popped up over the last week or so. First of all, I want to talk about the GTX 480. Now, you may be wondering why on earth I want to talk about this 10 year old flagship GPU again. Most of you are probably sick of the sight of it. I've got it whirring away in the system right now, actually for uh, benchmarking purposes but uh the reason i want to discuss this aging nvidia fermi flagship is because a story popped up recently whereby another engineering sample was found now what's interesting about the engineering samples of the 480 a few of which were floating around about a decade ago is that they have 512 cuda cores they are the fully unlocked version of what was an essentially cut back end product. With 480 CUDA cores back in 2010, the GTX 480 did a fine job of running all of the current games out there. It cost quite a bit, it used a ton of power and it ran incredibly hot. But essentially, as far as performance was concerned, it was a decent enough card. This mysterious engineering sample, a few of which started to do the rounds in late 2010, um, was interesting because it offered about 6% more performance on average across a few games, at least according to a few old reviews I found. So I found a review on EXP Review, I believe the website was called, it's since been taken down. I followed various links to the website and unfortunately I can't seem to access the article. With a standard GTX 480 in their test system, I'm not sure what that test system entirely comprised of, but it was using 450 watts with a standard 480 installed. However, with a 512 core GTX 480, this boosted the system power consumption up to 644 watts. So you're talking an extra 194 watts just from these extra cores and 6% performance increase. Now to me, that doesn't really seem worth it. So it's obvious as to why this 512 core GTX 480 never emerged onto the market. I mean, that sort of performance increase for such a huge increase in power consumption, well, I don't think anything, sorry, anyone would have purchased that, to be honest. Now, you guys know I'm a lover of engineering samples or rare and unreleased graphics cards. I own a few myself, not the 48512, mind you, but if I ever do come across one, I'll very likely purchase it. However, I wanted to tackle this theoretically. Let's say that that 6% average increase in performance carries on even today. What sort of difference does that actually mean you'll see in games? Well, let's take a few titles, for example, starting with The Outer Worlds. Now, where this game will just about pull off 30 FPS at low settings with 1080p resolution, the 6% increase, let's say, from the 48512 would mean that we're seeing about 31, 32 FPS instead. Now, this doesn't seem like much, I know, and it really isn't, but if you're hovering on that line between playable and unplayable, an extra, albeit small, boost in performance might help you out, especially if you want to lock that frame rate to 30. Your game might feel a little bit smoother. For those modern titles that might struggle on a standard 480, a 512 core version might help that tiny little bit, though still, for the power consumption, it, it, just, it just makes no sense. It made no sense then, and it certainly wouldn't make any sense now. Let's not forget that the 480 is still somewhat capable anyway in other games. The Witcher 3, for example, still runs fairly well, albeit with the low settings, so that 6% increase wouldn't really do much again. Finally, Red Dead Redemption 2 runs at about 15, 16 FPS anyway on the 480. And so 6% isn't going to make any difference. It's not going to be playable. Now, I know that some games may differ in terms of what extra performance they offer on a GTX 480.512, but even if they offered a 10% increase in performance, well, you're not really going to be gaining much, especially in games that these days would be unplayable on a regular 480 anyway. But I thought it was an interesting story. I'll leave a link to the tech power-up page of the GTX 48512 because there's a picture there. It looks a bit like a 470 with a slightly modified shroud, but I'll leave the link, as I say, to the specs below. So while we're on the subject of 6% performance increases, I'd like to talk about Nvidia's new card. Well, not really a new card, but an existing card that's seen 
one particular change. The GTX 1650, it wasn't particularly well reviewed when it came out a little while ago, but for the price, it seemed like an okay option. That was until the 1650 Super came along. So the 1650 is going to change from GDDR5 to GDDR6 VRAM. And the reason being is that GDDR5 is simply harder to get at the moment. The industry is running out of GDDR5, according to NVIDIA. This card will give you a slight performance increase, as I said before, from what I've seen um, in a couple of reviews. But again, it's going to be nothing compared to the 1650 Super, which can be found, at least here in the UK, for a very similar price to the 1650. So it really doesn't make that much sense still. But if you can find a 1650 with no external six pin requirement, then it's still going to be a decent option for those, you know, uh, OEM Dell machines, HP machines, for example, something you can slot a graphics card into and turn into a gaming rig without much effort. I'll try and get my hands on one and review it in comparison to the original 1650 as soon as I can. And finally, I want to talk about a game, a very specific game that has caused a little bit of controversy over its couple of years in existence, but now it's coming to Steam. I am, of course, talking about Fallout 76. Now, when this first arrived, I, much like everyone else, was a little sceptical, though I have to admit, when I started playing, I was quite enjoying it. I bought it on Bethesda.net, and uh, after downloading it, playing it for a couple of days, whilst I was enjoying it, I did get bored quite quickly. I think the lack of human NPCs really was a bit of a, a mistake on Bethesda's part, but they're being added in with this new Wastelanders update. It's releasing on Steam on April the 14th. And of course, this new Wastelanders update will be included. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not this makes enough of an improvement to the title to make all of those older players jump back in. People who bought it first of all, and now who don't play it anymore, much like myself. I'm looking forward to the update to see what it brings to the game. I think there is still a lot of potential with Fallout 76, but we'll just have to wait and see. The reason I bring it up is because if you bought this on Bethesda.net, you will be getting a free Steam copy of the game. So I think that might be another incentive for players to jump back into it. And like I say, I bought it on Bethesda.net, so I'll certainly be re-downloading it on Steam when it comes to that platform, along with the Free Wastelanders update. And maybe I'll even start to feature it in the benchmarks again, if it's a game I can get back into, but maybe I'll bring you some sort of review along with uh, a minimum requirements test or something. So that just about does it for now. Those are a few stories that I found interesting this week. Um, tomorrow, I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different with my PC. Hopefully you can join me then, but for now, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. All the links to anything relevant that I've spoken about will be down in the description, of course. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.